Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. Turkey and Italy took center stage as they raised the curtain for the Euros. Gunas' side are a solid team, whilst Mancini's Italy are a dark horse to win the whole thing. And in the end, the match finished 3-0 to Italy, thanks to a Demiral own goal, Insigne and Immobile. The XG suggested it was a deserved win, 2.07 to 0.6, but what tactics did both managers use? Let's take a look. And I know a lot of you are fantasy football fans, and throughout these Euros, the fantasy app I will be using is FanClash, who are kindly sponsoring this video. I'll be using it as not only is it free to play, but there's also cash prizes up for grabs after every match. And it's also a lot more exciting and interactive than regular fantasy football. Before each match, you select 4 players who you think will score well. And one of my favourite parts of Fan Clash is that it's not just about goals and assists, but passes, blocks, catches and so much more are rewarded well. Throughout the 90 you have 4 power-ups you can use. For example, you can double the points scored for shooting actions for a limited time. If you top the leaderboard, you could win cash. Join my group by downloading it through the link in the description, search for Football Made Simple and follow me and your other friends and watch the leaderboard be updated throughout the 90. I'll try to follow as many of you back as possible. A quick reminder of how both teams lined up. Let's start with the Italy's tactics as they dominated possession. Italy were generally looking to build up short, as Turkey rarely pressed high up the pitch. And their defensive shape was fluid often interchanging between a 4-2-3-1 and a 4-4-2 with Yazji pushing higher. And Italy often used a lopsided back three in the build-up, with Florenzi initially tucking in and Chiellini moving wider, particularly when Turkey only had one man up top, as this would now grant the wide centre-backs Chiellini in particular, the space to advance the ball higher up the pitch, as you can see in the touch map. However, with the centre often well protected by Turkey, the flanks were key for Italy, attacking both sides with different patterns. Although a flatter midfield three on paper, Locatelli and Jorginho often formed a double pivot, allowing Barella to be the free man and his importance was emphasised as Turkey often committed a midfielder to the front line, so Italy had the natural 3 vs 2 advantage here, allowing them to maintain possession. Florenzi's deep positioning down the right meant that at times, the Turkey wide man would be drawn into closing him down, and this is where Barella and Berari combined well, as Barella would often move into space on the right half space, meaning that Meraz would have two men to track. So, on more than one occasion, Barella was able to receive and looked to combine with Berardi in these positions. If Lorenzi was left free however, he would also have the space to push higher up. Down the left hand side, the mechanism was completely different. Locatelli would often drop into a pseudo left back position, with the main aim being to release Spinazzola to move higher up the pitch, which would in turn free up Insigne. And we saw Insigne pushing in as a second forward, especially when he had played the ball out to Spinazzola to go for the cross. At the same time, he could operate deeper in zone 14, almost as a second 10 alongside Barella looking to find intricate passes higher up the pitch. And it should be noted that Karaman was fairly disciplined in tracking Spinazzola deep, so Celic in this narrow position would often look to be touch tight to Insigne. On a couple of occasions, Berardi looked to take advantage of the space created with diagonal runs. Insigne also had success using his superior pace to get around Celic into that space. The contrasting attacking strategies down both sides shows in the average positions, with Barella and Berardi in close proximity, whilst Locatelli, Spinazzola and Insigne form a left-hand side overload alongside Chiellini. And this overload was causing Turkey problems, 
so they were often forced to cover across, at times, with the double pivots being dragged across as the azichi was high. This would leave Barella, often advanced on the right-hand side, in plenty of space to receive and look to combine with Berardi. We see elements of this in the first two goals. We see Florenzi deep forming the wide back three, which draws the attention of Under. Locatelli moves wide left and the Turkey midfield shifts across to cover. And as Chalanoglu had been higher up, it was the two holding men who were forced to cover across, and this gives Barella space on the inside right between the lines. So the Turkey fullback has come narrow onto Barella, so Berardi can then receive wide and his cross is deflected in. We see similar elements in the second, with Italy having the ball wide left. The Turkey midfield again looks to shift across, but this leaves Barella once again free on the inside right. Again, the fullback is 2 vs 1 down, so Berardi can receive and cross, and after some pinball, Immobile gets the goal. Now let's briefly touch on a couple of things Turkey did in possession. Generally, from the goal kick, particularly with the scoreline level, they looked to go long to Yilmaz or Karaman from the goal kick, but with little success, and Shakir attempted 30 long balls. But they did look to build short at times however, with the centre-backs building wider, and Italy were keen on the press, with Immobile pressing the keeper and both wingers tucking in onto the centre-backs, often forcing a clearance. But at times, the fullbacks would be free as a result in these phases, and Shakir could look to find a free fullback, which could be effective. However, the Italian backline would shift across to cover this quickly, with the fullback pressing his opposite number whilst the centre backs shifted across. The third goal has shades of this. The centre backs have split wide to give the goalie options, and Immobile is beginning to press, whilst the wingers are ready to press the centre backs. This time, however, the ball out to the fullback is short, allowing the winger to intercept, leading to Insigne's goal. Overall, Italy dominated from start to finish, and a strong first match puts them in a good position to get out of the group. Turkey, on the other hand, will need to display more cutting edge going forward to make it past this stage. But what did you make of the match, and who do you see getting out of the group? drop it down below and hit subscribe as we'll be covering plenty of matches throughout the Euros. And don't forget to check out Fan Clash through the link in the description below and follow me to see how you get on. A quick shout out to my Patreons for helping to make this video possible. If you want to support, head on over to patreon.com slash simple and you'll get rewards like early access to videos and exclusive content. And a special thanks to my Patreons including Daniel Coelho and Andre Tanazi. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.